out of curiosity, healthcare savings accounts, which we created, I don't know, what was it, five years ago or something like that, six years ago, I'm hearing mixed feelings. <clears throat> you know, they're created as a possible alternative for small businesses to be able to create a healthcare savings account for their employees rather than the expense of full-blown health insurance. But I've heard some small business saying it's too uh, expensive or it's too tough to get them going. Um, are you seeing any of that? As a provider, more health care savings accounts, or are you seeing any at all? Virtually, virtually none in, in our rural area at all right now. How about anybody that, yes? We, we had, we've had some firsthand experience with that. We, we have encouraged some of our members who are in our health care plan to look at health care savings accounts, and uh, the take rate is tiny. Really? Virtually zero. <laughs> and I think, the, I think the reason is, frankly, um, how making decisions about financial decisions about health care without knowing what's going to happen is very difficult for people. I, I, I think folks are, are simply reluctant to set aside money or, or to, to completely understand the trade-offs between coverage and a health care savings account because of the uncertainty aspect of it. And I, I just think as it's been discussed with both our bottlers and their employees, I, I think there's a there is an uncertainty and fear factor that's a significant impediment, particularly for folks who may not be highly educated. Ms. Fox. I just add that um, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation, 13% of workers in small firms are now in high deductible health plans. And we do, many of our plans do sell um, HSAs with high deductible health plans. And they've found one plan has reported that 20% of its enrollment in the products are from people that were previously uninsured. So, and what our plans do is we give um, our customers a range of products and so that they could pick what best meets their needs. So it's not we're favoring one versus another. Um, but we do find that um, some previously uninsured workers, uh, small employers, have found that very attractive. I know we got a lot. I would like to add yeah, that yes, absolutely. for the HSAs, um, I have an HSA with my company. But as um, the economic times get tougher and tougher, the employee tends to pull back the coverage, the money that they will be contributing to use for something else. <clears throat> kind of a... It's a catch-22 situation. We all think we're going to be healthy forever, and so we don't worry. Right. right. And with my, with my company, we have a lot of young employees. You couldn't get them to sign up for that. They need every nickel they want to come home. They're, uh, you know, they're young. Nothing's going to happen to me. I don't need to contribute to it. You know, the encouraging, the good side of the HSAs is that they do allow more comprehensive coverage for catastrophic events for less money. Mm -hmm. And so you know, all of this is such a trade-off between what does it cost to get coverage and, you know, we want to avoid this underinsured situation as well. And I understand the people that say, well, the HSA may keep people from going to the doctor when they need to. But uh, there are ways with the PPO that I think it can be structured well. Uh, but obviously it needs more education and more examination.